I'm really afraid. And it's not completely about the fact that I'm presenting a TED Talk. It's actually more about what's going to happen up next, you know, growing up, going to college, and suddenly realizing that the world might not like me. Maybe it's just my shy personality, but what's more worrying about this is that there are more people with this introverted traits than what we think. I mean, they might be even seated right beside you, but what is an introvert? Because when the word comes to mind, we usually think about shy, timid, and close to individuals, which is completely opposite to their extroverted half, which is known for being expressive, sharing with thoughts, and having teamwork and leadership skills. This is probably the reason why introverts can appear to have it more difficult in our society, where being able to show yourself in presentation and have confidence are key for the public. Introvert actually refers to a person who can work from a more internal position, who can be able to analyze and reason in ways that are usually misinterpreted in the real world. This is why I believe introverts should be given the opportunity to flourish from past depression and together with their extroverted half, cooperate in the basics of education, workplace, and the social plan. Okay, so if we look from the 2000 to 2018, there really isn't a huge difference in the amount of information available about introverts. Susan Cain, lawyer, but also one of the most important representatives of the introvert movement, poses a social problem. She calls it the extrovert ideal. The belief that you have to have an invigorated nature if you want to be successful in life. She even presents this in her own TED talk when she shows how nowadays even in activities like creative writing and math, students are expected to work together, work in groups. And if they don't feel comfortable doing this, they're considered outcasts or even problem cases. Now, I really admire her and have gathered a lot of information from her, but I'm not here to repeat her words. Actually, I'm here to present the few flaws I've been able to find in her statement. So let me give you an example. Let's say that an American elementary school has begun to apply this. Now, introverts and extroverts are able to work in their separate places. And now introverts are able to work privately, and let me tell you, as an introvert, I think that would be the greatest thing. It would be amazing. But that's only from my perspective. Because, let's say, Alex, an extrovert student, suddenly realizes that his classmates, his introvert classmates, are receiving a different type of attention. And maybe he's doing something wrong. Something has changed. You see, in our eagerness to accept our newly obtained on knowledge, we often forget about the consequences this could have. So, shouldn't we teach about what introverts are in the first place? I mean, there's still a large amount of population who doesn't know what introvert and extrovert mean and why it should be important. And it doesn't have to end there. Psychologists, teachers, even parents have the responsibility, the duty of being able to allow their students to understand what these terms mean and why it's important for their future for them not to make the same mistakes than in the past. So now I'm going to tell you a story. I was seven years old and I went to a birthday party. And as social as I am, I couldn't quite speak. It took me a while, but I was finally able to talk with a girl that was a little older than me. And she recommended I try to be more expressive, keyword there, and uh, open myself to others and therefore I would have more friends. And at the moment I thought that was a great the words of wisdom. But then it was bombarded by the same information again and again. Okay, so where am I going with this? So I conducted a survey for high school collegial believer students and 95% of them assured they knew or were familiar with the word introvert. However, 69% of them also said that the key term that they find introverts was that uh, they had less social behavior, and even though this is commonly believed, it can't be assured to be true. For example, evidence pointing. Rachel Redner was able to conduct a study where introverts and extroverts' brain were analyzed, and it was found that extroverts were able to uh, follow human faces better than introverts. This is just one more piece of evidence to support the assertion that personality is not merely a psychology concept. There's some broader foundation for the behavior that you see, and beginning that there are neural bases for different personality types. So there is other types of evidence to support that introverts aren't just like Googling and figuring out apparently they're a shy person, but it's not true. What I'm trying to say here is that 
I inspire you to try to get your own evidence, try to find your own information about this. Have a, have a way to gather new ways to figure out what these two words mean for yourself and for the others around you. But what do we do with the students who are now moving into the labor world? Surely they're having more difficult since extroverts are way better at leadership. I mean, just look at the example of Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King Jr., Barack Obama. They all portray the correct archetype of a leader. Even one of the most important ones, Tony Robbins, who did a TED Talk himself, they all are very good when it comes to public speaking, but evidence points to the contrary. Because if we look, for example, at the article 15.5, there was research done where it was found that introverts were better chief executives than extroverts. The study, a new study from research at the University of Chicago, Harvard, and Stanford found that the introverted chief executives made better leaders. The study of linguistic analysis is over 4,000 CEOs of publicly trained US companies, known as the Big Five. Agreeableness, concentrousness, extroversion, neuroticism, and openness to experience. So surely this means that introverts are the solution, right? No. We need both of them. Here's why. Let's say, uh, people usually say that Steve Wozniak is the basics of Apple, and without him, Steve Jobs would have, been, would have not become popular. Well, without each other, Apple would have never happened. There needs to be a combination, an equilibrium between, between both of them. That is the true solution for them. But if we were looking for a better solution, I was able to find one that convinced me. And it came from the author, which is also a professional speaker and executive coach specialist, Jennifer Kennedy, and in her book, Quiet Influence, where she was able to perform how, show how CEOs, how, for example, CEOs could be able to utilize introverted traits to their benefit. For example, uh, being able to think about problems in this company, uh, or trying to fix them, or going back to education, allowing uh, students to learn the importance of listening, and there is a word to this. It's called ambiverts, but why can't all of us be ambiverts? Well, it seems that we would have to sacrifice half of our peace. Whether we are innately introverted or extroverted, we have to sacrifice this. And I don't believe that is quite possible, but it doesn't mean we can't strive to become better each day. Whether it is public speaking, like I'm doing right now, or trying to spend some quiet time on reading and writing in order to become better at it. So, in the end, it's not really about one side being stronger than the other, one side being more vulnerable. It's about the way that these two sides together can actually form a society in a better way. And I don't want it to just end here, right now, after you guys leave. I would really enjoy if you could be able to spread this information, to help me, in a way. To be able to share this gift of me to you. The silent gift. Thank you.